Alright, so now that the camera decided to cut at a very convenient time, that's pretty much all I have to say about Dream Drop Distance. Uh, if you liked it on- it really, if I had to give any more final thoughts on it, I can't really think of any other major complaints I had with the game that I want to bring up. I, of course, I could bring up minor complaints, like how bosses still don't stagger, and how the boss fights are not the best, and, and stuff like that. But honestly, again, I want to give it its own video. I feel it deserves it. So, moving on, a uh, final statement on DDD for this video. If you like the 3DS game, you're going to love the HD touch-up, uh, because it really does a great job polishing the game. Uh, so that's really awesome. Uh, if you just want to play it again to experience the story, it's also great. Uh, if you've never played Dream Drop Distance because you've never owned a 3DS, uh, then it's also great. Though I would recommend picking up a 3DS. Not so much for Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS now. I I'd more recommend it for other games like Kid Icarus Uprising and Smash 3DS and, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon and Hat Even X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire and Luigi's Mansion. Now let's talk about what everyone's here to talk about. Kingdom Hearts Chi back cover. <laughs> you serious? Kingdom Hearts Chi, for those who don't know, is a free-to-play mobile game that was actually a web browser game at one point. Though the web browser was a Japan, it was apparently like a Japan exclusive thing, and it was shut down. Uh, so Kingdom Hearts Chi and the entire universe itself is sort of like a side franchise uh, 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 that, you know, it's pretty much detailing the events uh, before any KH game. Uh, so one of the things that has been a, a, a common piece of the Kingdom Hearts mythos was that all of the worlds you see, the Disney worlds, like the Aladdin world, all of the, uh, and, and you know, all of the uh, other worlds like Traverse Town and Hollow Bastion, all of the worlds were eventually one ginormous world uh, and, and that was split apart by, uh, I think, like years of war uh, called the Keyblade War. The Keyblade War was uh, what pretty much fucked up everything and w with this war, the world, w and the entirety of the world was covered in darkness and the hearts of children brought light back to the world, but the world instead, instead of actually like reviving it, apparently separated. I don't, I don't, I don't honestly know. It's been a while since I played Kingdom Hearts 1. That's where this whole mythos started. But it essentially, Kingdom Hearts Chi and the entire universe itself uh, just sort of takes place around that time. Before any other Kingdom Hearts game, before Birth by Sleep, before uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, before any of them. So, because of that, uh, I'm not too well versed in Chi's story, mostly because I haven't played much of the mobile game. I've played around like 50 or so missions into it, and uh, uh, I, I honestly didn't stick with it. Uh, the game, I felt, was a bit repetitive for me. I, on Small Burst, I'm sure it's fine. In fact, that's when I was playing it at Small Burst, because uh, when I was trying to play it in large portions to get behind the story, I just, I, I, I didn't really get anywhere with it, and I just sort of stopped playing it. Uh, but overall, it's not terrible. I mean, I guess it's the best app game I've played, but that's not really saying much. I'm not really into mobile gaming. Uh, but if you're into mobile gaming, I guess I would recommend it. And for KH fans, I guess I recommend it too, since it does seem to be relatively popular. Though I will say the little chips that you can get are fucking expensive. Seriously, what the hell, Square? Apparently, the mobile phone game hasn't caught up to back cover yet. So, back cover takes place somewhere around the end where the Keyblade War actually begins. So, uh, back cover is essentially telling the story about the Master of Masters and uh, the Foretellers and the story behind them and how everything got fucked up and is essentially set up for the Great Keyblade War that would commence and separate all of the worlds. Uh, so that's essentially what back cover is. It's detailing the backstory behind the fall of the foretellers and their, you know, the, you know, the drama, the family drama. It might as well be family drama, uh, <laughs> and and how the master of masters just sort of disappeared and fucked everything up. So the basic, that's pretty much the basic story. Uh, the master of masters essentially gave each of the five foretellers who are students of the Master of Masters, uh, the, he gave them each a purpose and said that there was a traitor among them. They would have to find out this traitor and they were each given roles in case the Master of Masters disappears. 
He also tells, I believe, the leader of the bunch. I'm not sure if I forget if he tells the rest. Uh, honestly, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It's been like a like nearly a month since I've seen the movie, so I apologize if I mess anything up. But essentially, uh, uh, during this time, he says that there's going to be a war between the foretellers, and that the Keyblade War cannot be stopped. And he's not even going to try and find a way to stop it, because that's just how events are going to play out. Uh, so he gives each of the foretellers a purpose and says there's a traitor among them, and then just suddenly hightails it out of there and leaves. But not before giving another one of his students, who also wears some kind of hood, uh, kind of like the Organization 13 in their hoods when they, like, you know, we never actually see the Master Master's, uh, face at all. Uh, and we see, uh, we see another guy in a hood, uh, that's sort of a student, walk around with this box. And Xehanort's T-Blade, no, no name, before it actually got into the hands of Xehanort, long before that point. Um, it's because of, uh, we don't know what's in the box yet, apparently that's going to be revealed in Kingdom Hearts 3. However, there's several other questions this movie left me, well, um... Yeah, they didn't, they didn't really do a good job answering them. I'm going to be perfectly honest, I really didn't like Chi back cover. If you're wondering why I'm stuttering all over the place trying to explain this damn thing, I honestly don't know what they were trying to accomplish with Chi back cover. cover. Okay, so let's just go over the good points before we get to the bad. First off, the Master of Masters is hilarious. He was the one thing that kept me going throughout this entire thing. The Master of Masters is perhaps a bit too cartoony, but I like that the Master of Masters, instead of being this wise mentor that's just like, yes, there is a war brewing and uh, we cannot stop it. I am the Master of Masters. Uh, you know, that, that yeah, he's not stern or, uh, so he's not like, say, other masters like, say, Yen Sid or Diz, where he's very stern, very quiet, very soft-spoken. No. The Master Masters is kind of a kind of a dick, actually. <laughs> he's funny too. Like he's constantly joking around and messing with the foretellers. He's clearly uh, he he's clearly having fun with them. And I like how the foretellers take a lot of what he says seriously, even if he's not. So he's just like, whoa, 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 chill, man, calm down. I'm not going anywhere. He would disappear later on anyway. But still. That kind of stuff is actually kind of funny, and it gives him a sense of personality that I just don't get from some of the other characters in this movie. So, The Master of Masters was kind of hilarious. I also am fairly intrigued with the whole traitor subplot, even though it goes absolutely fucking nowhere, and I'll talk about that later on. Uh, he says that there's a traitor among them, and that makes me curious. Why did The Master of Masters set this whole thing up? For someone known as the Master of Masters, couldn't he find some way to stop the Keyblade War? Unless he wants the Keyblade War to happen. I, why does he want the Keyblade War to happen? Why did he cause a dri uh, uh, why, why did he cause a, 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 a thing between the Foretellers? Why did he start the war? He essentially instigated it. Was he trying to instigate it early so it would be over with? Uh, was he trying to set things up so the worlds could survive, knowing that this great battle would, these great battles would occur and destroy the world? Like, why did he do all of this? What, how, how did he know that there was going to be a war? Why did he essentially instigate the war? Who was the traitor? Who did, how did, why didn't he find the traitor himself and take care of it? There are so many questions, but that's also my biggest issue with this movie, is that most of the questions about the Master of Masters, the most interesting character, are not answered. Where did he disappear to? Why did he disappear? Was he the traitor the entire time? Who was the traitor? And that's another thing, the, the traitor is never found, we never find out who the traitor actually is in the movie. Now, apparently it's probably going to be revealed at the end of the mobile game, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan of the mobile game. Not to say it's bad, I'm sure it's fine for mobile game standards, but at the same time, I don't play mobile games. I don't play Chi Back Cover. I should not have to play a mobile game to understand your fucking movie. So because of that, it just leaves a very empty feeling because we never learn about who the traitor is. We never learn half of the questions I have about the Master of Masters. But despite that, for what it was, I enjoyed his character. I also enjoyed some of the performances of the uh, Foretellers. Even though the Foretellers were fucking boring, in terms of their characterization, I did enjoy some of the performances, and I'm actually, let me get my phone so I can actually list the actors off, so I'll be right back. Alright, so I have a, I had a list of the uh, voice actors here on my phone. 
One of them in particular was uh, Tra uh, Travis Willingham, who is the current voice of Knuckles. He, I actually, originally I actually thought Dan Green was, uh, uh, was, uh, a voice actor in this, but no, it's actually him, uh, and I can, I can, I can see why, because his version of Knuckles sounds exactly like Dan Green. Uh, I, I, of course, like, uh, Ray Chase as the Master of Masters, I think he gave him a really, uh, really awesome voice. As for the others, I actually recognize a few of these, um, Max Middleman, uh, I actually found out he voiced Saitama from the, uh, One Punch Man dub. Matthew Mercer, I believe. Yeah, yeah, him. He voiced Levy, and uh, he voiced Levy in Attack on Titan, and he also voiced uh, Leon in Resident Evil. Though uh, I've I've never actually played Resident Evil, so I, I can't really say much. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of the performances, so that was neat. And the animation and uh, the engine was really really good. Uh, it's running on uh, Unreal Engine 4, and it's running with the same technology used for cutscenes for 0.2, and of course. Kingdom Hearts 3, which we don't have yet still. Regardless, it looks really, really good, so I'm excited to see the cutscenes of KH3, because at least I know they'll look good if, you know, Chi back cover looks this nice. So that's, that's a, that's, a, but overall, let's, let's get into some of the negatives. So I already talked about some of the negatives beforehand. Nothing really ends. The, the, the thing with, Chi back cover that's my biggest issue is that it, it honestly raises more questions than it answers and in a, a series that's known for its convoluted as fuck story over the course of like 10 different games that's totally what we needed so uh, it's like like I said uh, the tr who the traitor is is never actually revealed uh, that's probably my biggest thing like you set up this really interesting the only interesting plot line in this entire thing and you never answer it my question about why the Master of Masters did the things he did, never answered. Who the traitor is, never answered. Uh, who, which one of the four tells can, for tellers cannot be trusted, uh, trusted? Yeah. Was it the Master of Masters? Yeah. Why, why don't they try and stop, uh, why don't they try and stop the war from happening? I don't know. I don't know. Half of the shit isn't actually finished. It feels like it's part one of a story that will never have a part two. And it ends off on a really frustrating note because of that. And apparently the Master of Masters will not be in Kingdom Hearts 3. So half of the shit I know for a fact will not be explained. At least I don't think it will. Which means this is very clearly to... I think this movie was made to gauge people's interest in the mobile game. But honestly, that's not what I think they should have done. What I think they should have done is have the story of the mobile game put on to uh, this. It had like sort of a documentary type thing on all the events that happened in the mobile game and I think that would engage more of an interest. Not like literally like take cutscenes and then put them on. No. What I mean is that like you document all of the most important events from the mobile game and you tell exactly what happened. I understand the story isn't finished in the mobile game yet so that's not exactly the, the, the possible right now. But I think it would have been better than this because honestly, it it starts off it, it starts off kind of intriguing. I mean, I don't care about the foretellers. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care about them as characters. But the whole thing with who was the traitor among them was the only interesting thing that I was keeping an eye on, and it was never answered. And, and when I saw the ending, my jaw actually dropped. It was just like, that's it. That's it. And like by the end of it, I was just like, well, that was that was a movie. That was I think that was a movie. Was that a movie? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it was half a movie. And the foretellers as characters are all just kind of bland. Again, I love the performances they're given, but they're so bland. And you're essentially watching just bickering between the five the entire time. There's barely any fight scenes either, which I understand uh, that's not really what this movie was made for, but with awesome animation, I was hoping for a fight scene, and there's only like one in the entire movie, and it's not really that great. I mean, it's well shot in terms of camera work, but in terms of the actual actual choreography, it's kind of eh, very eh. I've seen better from the Kingdom Hearts series in cutscenes, a lot better. And no, I'm not just talking about the fancy CG cutscenes either. So I had very mixed feelings on Chi back cover. It's I hesitate to say it's bad, but I can't really call it good either. Can't even call it okay either. It, it feels like it's not finished yet. 
and unfortunately I think that's just because it's a very small piece of the mobile game story that has yet to be answered. And honestly, probably won't be answered, at least for me, because I don't want to play the mobile game to find out anything more.